Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now turning the conversation to politics. The Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, had said last year in about November 2020 that they would begin the continuous voter registration CVR in the first quarter of 2021. It's the first quarter. We've not heard anything from INEC regarding this. That means they've missed their deadline for registering Nigerians to vote for the upcoming elections. Now they've said the voter registration would begin in the second quarter of the year. And there's a lot to discuss about this, really, with elections fast approaching. And we've invited a political affairs analyst, Mr. Achike Chude, to discuss this with us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Morning. All right. Anita. Yes, good to have you. So before we go into the deadline, you know, and all of that, let's begin with the name, the continuous voter registration in the first place. The name implies that, you know, this registration should be continuous. So why do we, or why does INEC need to have a time to start and stop the registration? Uh, because uh, it's uh, all things Niger or Nigeria. Um, if this is uh, not exactly a country where things work like uh, clockwork, you know. So sometimes uh, when uh, emerging issues, you know, come up, then we have to, you know, make uh, adjustments. Uh, well, the the INEC has said that they are going to start in the first quarter of this year. That's from uh, January to March, and they have not done that. Uh, so we we hope that um, they they have subsequently said that they will start in the second quarter. Obviously, there are logistic issues or. I don't, I don't want to believe that, uh, they are, that they have funding issues because at the very last budget that, that was made also included you know, aspects of uh, this uh, for continuous voter registration. Um, it's unfortunate that it didn't start on time. I mean, like they had said, it was going to happen. Uh, because uh, the, the reality is uh, we have seen uh, the problem with um, uh, uh, you know, people piling up at, um, at uh, registration centers to do their civic uh, duties. We have seen, uh, you know, um, voters' cards uh, being uh, uh, so much uh, in, in terms of numbers uh, in many parts of uh, the country, across the country. Uh, people have not been able to get their uh, voters' cards and so on because of the difficulty and because of the ways and manners these cards have been arranged. They are put in big, big, you know, bags. And so thousands in a bag and you get in there, you have to start going through uh, one, you know, all of the cards themselves. So people have had to, in the past, to engage consultants. Consultants, in this uh, case, being uh, members of uh, of staff, either of the commission, uh, to with a, for a price, for a fee, they are they are asked to help uh, get uh, some of these uh, cards out. Uh, so it it is not uh, the best, like I have said. It is something that should be continuous, just like they have promised. And we want to begin to see these uh, institutions live, you know, walk the talk. And not oh. just say something and then you're not able to do that. So right. we yes, have acknowledge that uh, there must have been reasons uh, for, for the delay, but uh, we can't keep on giving reasons. Uh, All right. Most times that uh, these All things right. are not done as they should be. Mr. Chude, we're going to go on a short break. Um, we, we still, I would like us to continue this conversation with regards to logistics and how we can make the process more, you know, a lot, you know, more seamless. Um, how can we all, you know, maybe can also bring in technology into all of this, you know, instead of moving uh, staff across the whole country and, and carrying equipment left and right across Nigeria. Uh, but we'll talk about that after, you know, the short break um, in just uh, less than a minute. So stay with us. And welcome back uh, to The Breakfast. We're talking continuous voter registration. INEC, of course, uh, has uh, missed its deadline, uh, had initially planned to start in the first quarter of 2021. There's now talks of uh, postponing that to the second quarter, which is in about a week's time. Uh, we're still speaking this morning with uh, public affairs analyst Achike Chude. Um, so, uh, sir, let's go back to the conversation with regards to logistics now. Um, and you're talking about how INEC, you know, should at this point find ways to make this process, uh, you know, a lot easier. Uh, they had mentioned that the, they would use INEC voters enrollment devices for the CVR instead of the direct data capturing machine. 
Um, there's also conversations, uh, I think it was on the punch this morning, that uh, they were going to try and make uh, the process online to capture as much as 16 million. Do you, you know, see that the body will be able to achieve this and make the process a lot easier so that we can spend less money, um, uh, you know, doing the CVR and also be able to capture more and more people without stressing Nigerians? Yeah, well, I, I let, like, there are certain things we have to give, uh, you know, INEC, and that is the fact that, um, you know, and that's the fact that um, uh, INEC has been at least, you know, getting it right uh, to a very large extent. It's not, no, it's, not it's not been an easy journey, uh, but um, uh, technology increasingly is being used by INEC in the conduct of elections in the country. You know, apart from a data, the data, you know, capturing machine, we have also seen the successes that uh, INEC has achieved in the past uh, few elections, especially governorship elections, when it comes to the immediate uh, uploading of uh, results uh, into a server. Uh, we all know the, the problem of uh, that they had with the central server uh, at a time uh, when uh, the article, article uh, took uh, the, uh, the PDP APC presidential uh, uh, tribunal, I mean, issue at the tribunal. Uh, when uh, the court also said that uh, there was no legal or you know constitutional legal backing uh, for the use of server, but I think they have been able to cross uh, that uh, hurdle. Uh, there is a bill uh, before the National Assembly for electoral reform, and that incorporates all of these things. So INEC has uh, increasingly, you know, been friendly with regards to the use of technology, and that technology has greatly you know, um, affected the, their operations. But one of the things, again, we must also acknowledge is the huge costs. Because I remember during um, in a meeting with um, uh, uh, that, that we had, the civil uh, uh, Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room uh, with some officials of INEC and then the issue of uh, technology, continuous use of technology, you know, came up. It, they did agree that um, that is the way to go and that they are doing everything in that direction to aid the process i mean in terms of the use of technology but that uh, the cost of some of these uh, technologies are so prohibitive so extensive and uh, so we cannot pretend that we're not in a dire financial situation in the country uh, we know how it is uh, so that in a way also has uh, some level of effect on their ability of INEC to do all that they want to do with regards to the use of technology uh, but still uh, I like the fact that they, they are also, just like you had indicated, that they are also looking at um, using uh, enhanced technology for this registration process and they, hopefully the process register about 16 more million people. I think that this is what we need. Of course, all of the, the, the advantages are there. It reduces people uh, going to uh, physical locations where these things have to be done. I, I, I think one of the things they have to look at is how to secure uh, to ensure that these registrations are done safely, because the politicians are always there, uh, hovering, uh, you know, on the wings to see how they can, uh, you know, hack into some of these systems uh, to uh, have a legitimate, uh, you know, undue legitimate, uh, undue and illegitimate uh, advantage, political advantage by so doing. I want us to get a sense of just how much work INEC has on its hands right now because there are people who have registered but have not gotten their PVC and many Nigerians have turned 18 since the last one. So how can they now be able to keep up, especially with this backlog, with them now starting late, you know, be, be, behind their, de their schedule and their deadline for the first quarter of the year? Yes, well, the, the issue is uh, it's not just an INEC thing. It's an INEC, you know, public uh, thing. Uh, the public also have to be fully conscious of their civic responsibilities and obligations. And so you don't need INEC to pursue them with a broomstick or a cane uh, to tell uh, you know, them to go and they pick up uh, their cards. Yes, we know that um, uh, it's difficult uh, the way these arrangements have been done. But I think we have, some of us have talked about the need to de decentralize seriously uh, the, the ways, I mean, the places where these uh, voters cards, for instance, could be obtained. They need to ensure that these things are brought closer to the people. Every local government, for instance, should be able to be a collection center 
and for INEC related issues. And so these are the things that we also uh, think they should do. So the people themselves. And then there should also be uh, this, uh, I don't know what the National Orientation Agency is, is doing because that should be their job, not just INEC. Uh, the NOA is not doing enough in terms of uh, creating the right environment, in terms of creating the right kind of public awareness when it comes to some of these civic duties on the part of the people, there must be constant reminders. There must be a way they synergize with INEC. First of all, make sure that these things are brought closer to the classrooms so that people can have access uh, to, to the places where they are, the types of, for instance, the voters' cards. And then at the same time, also go on air, uh, use the media. Even uh, media like, uh, like you people also should also be brought in. You have a job, you have a role to do. So what the government should do is to ensure that some of you people are giving money, paid for the services that the NOA, for instance, the government wants you people to do, and then so that you can also disseminate this information to people and uh, you know get them more conscientized and then no more conscious of the need for them to fulfill their civic care responsibilities and go all out to get their cards. And so oh, these are some of the things we, we actually uh, expect, yeah. Okay, and also speak about uh, the Nigerian factor now. Uh, two things I want to ask is, you know, first of all, do you think that there's more people? Uh, if you remember that the year 2020, um, October, created a huge conversation about voters uh, registration after the NSAS protest. So do you think that there is more and more Nigerians who are interested in getting their uh, voters card and getting registered? Um, and, of course, we want to be involved even more now in the political process. Uh, do you think that that has increased? And second, also, there continue, you know, over time to be these videos and clips of underage voters in parts of Nigeria. How do you think INE can do better uh, in ensuring that that, you know, ends uh, in, entirely? Yeah, well, in the look at it from two perspectives. In terms of demography, there is increasing demography in terms of uh, those people that are eligible for uh, to register and then uh, perform their civic care responsibilities. People are getting to the age, you know, where the law recognizes that they that they that they should be involved in political process. For instance, through voting, uh, uh, you know, you get to the age of eighteen. So those from seventeen have gotten to eighteen and all that. So you have more people from that perspective. But at the same time, you talk about. Um, you know, the engagement of the Nigerian people with the politics of the country. And I, don't, I think that that is where you are going to have falling demographics. As governments fail in this country to provide the dividends of democracy, people get more disillusioned with the difficulty of life, you know, and the fact that the politicians have not been able to make do on their promises to the people. Life is getting more and more difficult every day. Prices of commodities and items are going up. Uh, fuel price increase on a daily basis, I mean, on a almost uh, monthly basis right now, maybe a little bit of exaggeration from me. Uh, the increase in electricity bills and so on, all of these things have also made life very, very difficult for Nigerians. And so when Nigerians are confronted with the need to uh, be informed politically, what they are going to ask you is, what is in it for me? What have I gained from that? But that's the wrong kind of thinking that comes from you know, uh, ignorance of the duties and response and their responsibilities when it comes to the politics of the country. So people have been disillusioned and a lot, a lot of people are not going to participate politically because they are not seeing the dividends. Then the issue of, um, you know, uh, uh, underage uh, voting, especially in a particular part of uh, the country, that has gone on for years and years and nothing similarly has been done about it. I think that goes beyond INEC. I think it is a matter of the government to do something about. It is a problem that the media has highlighted time and time again. But don't forget that the people who run governments are politicians, and politicians are the ones who are gaining from this process of you know, ensuring that uh, people who have not really required age are voting. You know, so it needs political will on the part of the government and the you know, government officials to know that this is wrong, whether they are having political advantage or not. So these are because ultimately it's not about getting under age people put for your for your party. It is more about your ability to deliver on the dividends of democracy that will get people to come to the polling uh, uh, boots, uh, you know, to not by trying to manipulate the process. So obviously they are failing. For them to rely on that as a strategy is an indication that of, of acceptance that they have failed the people. 
Is this also beyond INEC talking about security, security during elections? We saw what happened in Ikiti State over the weekend. At least two people shot dead. A police officer was also shot, but you know, we hear that she's, she's recovering, receiving treatments in the hospital. Cases like this seem to repeat itself every election we have in the country. Do you think INEC might be doing enough to make sure that, you know, come 2023, we won't have news about this? Or is it beyond INEC again? You see, I mean, let, let us, uh, you know, uh, uh, put some of these things where they actually belong. The reality is that INEC has no control over security in any of the elections that they organize. You know, they do not have what. Uh, to a very large extent, they can influence what happens at the political, I mean, in terms of security. I know that, yes, what happened in the Kiti is unfortunate, but in some other elections, we have gotten it right, I mean, security-wise. The law enforcement agencies have been able to do what they should do. I, I was in the Ondo State during the election, and then, of course, we there, before that, there was the Edo State election. And there were dire warnings and you know predictions about what was going to happen in terms of breakdown of law and order, but that exactly did not you know happen. So uh, uh, they were able to get it right, but that is not an, an, an indication that we're moving so much in the right direction. You cannot have about 30,000, 40,000 police people and security people being deployed to a particular state for election as if there's a war going on. Uh, you know, I, I'm I, I'm not aware that we have. Deployed, the government has deployed up to 30,000 or 40,000 people to you know, security prone areas in the northeast and the northwest, northwest of Nigeria. We've not had that, those kind of numbers of our security personnel going to those places. Mm -hmm. So, for an election, you know, for that to happen, an election is an indication that lessons have not been learned from 1999 till date. Okay. The only way you can have reasonable election is to make sure that you overwhelm you know, uh, the, that particular area with security force. It doesn't bode well for a democracy. All right. Just um, just that we have no move as well as get you we should move. All right. I, I also want to, you know, speak about uh, one of the reasons, you know, the uh, CVR was delayed, and that is COVID-19, the pandemic. It's not over yet. Do you think that, you know, the promises of starting in the second quarter might also be affected by COVID-19? No, I, I think it is convenient. Any any little thing that happens, blame it on COVID-19. Uh, you know, because COVID-19 has not gone away. So if that was the reason uh, for, you know, uh, the postponement, I think they stay here for the second quarter that they are talking about. You know, so I think it was a convenient excuse for them to use COVID-19 as, as an excuse for that. And there were other things that were responsible for that postponement. And so we want to believe that those other uh, things have been, that they've taken them out of the way and that they can actually now go forward to. You All right. know, uh, ensuring that uh, the continuous voter registration does take place. All right. Um, Achike Chude, thank you so much for speaking with us and thanks for your time. Yes, thank you and have a great day. Thank you very much. That's All right. Great. So next up, we'll be speaking with an investigative journalist. He's done some pretty you know, interesting work Phenomenal. about the NSAS protest. And we'll be reviewing the judicial panels of inquiry set up to look into this matter and see how far they've come. Stay with us.